Hi everybody. Um, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Ashley Smith and I'm one of the founders of the Hawk Conservancy uh, along with my late parents, Reg and Hilary Smith. Um, I wor worked at the Hawk Conservancy for uh, 35 years and I left five years ago to move up to the Highlands of Scotland uh, where I live with my wife and we have a bed and breakfast and a small holding where we grow all our own food. So we're trying to live the good life. Um, I still go back and visit the Hawk Conservancy to help. Um, in fact, this is the longest period of time I think that I've ever been away from it. So like everybody else, um, I'm missing my visits to the Trust. Um, I was contacted by Louise. Um, Louise is the lady that does all of our marketing at the Hawk Conservancy and uh, along with Alice and Hannah and they're doing an amazing job at, I think keeping us all informed as to what's going on. Anyway she asked me if I would tell you a little bit about the history of the Trust uh, and I've been thinking about it and it, it, it's not easy to tell you everything that's gone on over the last 60 years so I'm going to break it down a little bit and just pick one aspect of what we do and today I thought I'd tell you about the hospital. Um, the hospital originally um, was in the farmhouse which still stands in the middle of the grounds today and it was in the bathroom and the reason it was in the bathroom is that that was the warmest room in the house. It had a paraffin heater and uh, it was always lovely and warm and there were various boxes where the injured birds and animals could go. This was in the days in the 1950s uh, when mum and dad were farming but they used to look after injured birds and animals uh, as, a, as a hobby. In the 1960s they opened this Wayhill Wildlife Park and still continued to keep the birds and the animals in the house. In actual fact it became quite useful because uh, in the zoo days we started to get what's called VAT inspections. I'm sure there's a few people watching that have had a VAT inspection which is uh, a pretty um, nail-biting experience and my dad hated them with a passion. Um, he thought they were the devil incarnate you know and as far as he was concerned paying VAT was like having a silent partner where nobody helped and uh, so he gave them very short shrift and he was thrilled that uh, on one of our VAT inspections um, when the lady asked to use the loo after a couple of minutes she left because she couldn't bear to go to the toilet um, with two badgers and a barn owl looking at her and uh, I remember him being absolutely delighted. As time went on the bathroom wasn't really working and and so we needed to change and that really came about because of my mum. Um, my mum was thinking of retiring and she asked me one day if uh, she could have her bathroom back because she'd like to retire. Well in those days uh, we didn't have an awful lot of money and so we had to wait until we could save up enough funds to actually build a hospital and then one afternoon we had a phone call. I was on a, I remember I had it on a wonder phone and a lady very kindly offered us a donation and I said could we put it towards the hospital. In those days we weren't a charity, we were still just a family. And so when I found out that in actual fact we'd have to pay tax on her donation, I sent a check back and she said okay I'll hold it for you and if you become a charity um, then I can give it back to you and it'll get the ball rolling to build a hospital. So over a couple of years we got everything organised so that we could turn that aspect of what we did into a charitable trust um, and we built the hospital that you see today. Uh, it had its first uh, uh, opening in the beginning of 2002 and we had a royal opening with the Duke of Gloucester and all of the great and the good came and it was a really special day. It's had anything up to 200 birds a year come in um, some years it's less and some years it's more um, and I think a lot of that is weather dependent. If the weather is really inclement when young birds leave the nest then sometimes we'll get more patients. And we've had quite a lot of notable patients come in over the years and there's one in particular that I have really fond memories of um, and it's a peregrine falcon, a female peregrine. Um, she came to us from probably the furthest distance that we've, we've ever had an injured bird. She came from Guernsey um, and when she came to us she was very low in condition and she'd lost a lot of body weight and she was covered in oil 
Now we're not quite sure even today exactly what oil it was but we think it may have come from Fulmers because she smelt incredibly fishy and we think it may have been Fulmers that had sort of vomited over her and all of her feathers had got stuck together. She couldn't fly properly um, and that's how she ended up with us. Now at the time our hospital was looked after by Kim and Kim spent days and days getting all of the oil out of her feathers and we built her up into really healthy condition and she went back to Guernsey um, but her transport was amazing. Do you know she went back to Guernsey on the Specsavers private jet which I just thought was really spectacular. About six months later um, we had a phone call from uh, a, a gentleman who uh, was a worked for the BTO for the British Trust for Ornithology and he was watching a peregrine falcon through his telescope on a nest with babies and he could get in so close that he could actually read the ring number on the peregrine's leg and it was the peregrine falcon that we'd looked after in our hospital and had returned to the wild. So we were just delighted because when you have a hospital and you take in lots of birds um, there's lots of sadness because sometimes birds don't make it and you can't get them back to the wild because of the severity of their injuries. So when you actually hear about one that's gone back to the wild and then is bred in the wild as well, um, it was just wonderful news for us. Nowadays our hospital is uh, managed by Cedric and many of you will know Cedric and we're very lucky to have him. Um, he's such a compassionate man. Uh, he has a band of volunteers that work with him and the hospital is in really good hands. Cedric has been with us for over 20 years. Um, for those of you that don't know, um, he came to us on work experience. He was on a work placement um, from France and uh, while he was with us, he was helping us in the shows, doing the demonstrations. And I'm always reminded of, of one incident that happened with Cedric that I want to tell you before I finish. Uh, we were flying the birds on August bank holiday, our busiest day of the year. Hundreds and hundreds of visitors in. A really warm day and we were doing the Valley of the Eagles and we got to the bit where uh, we call the kites home. And you know you all clap and when you clap the kites go home. Well they all went home bar one, um, a bird called Paris and she just stayed and carried on going higher and higher. And I didn't really know what to do. We were really busy and I couldn't work out who was going to go with her and Cedric was there and I said to Cedric, could you follow that kite for me please? And he just said, yes I am on my way. And he just tore off and followed Paris. I didn't know that he was a marathon runner. Anyway, we finished our day and we were putting birds away and then the phone rang and I went to the office and picked the phone up and he, a voice said, it is Cedric. And I went, oh, Cedric, I'd forgotten all about you. Are you all right? I am with the kite. I am no, I'm with the kite. I know exactly where it is. It is in a tree above me. And I said, where are you? He said, I am in Basingstoke. And he'd run 17 miles to Basingstoke and followed this kite. And it was in a tree underneath the phone box. So we all got into the car, drove to Basingstoke and brought Cedric and the kite back home. So, ladies and gentlemen, be assured that our hospital is in really good hands. OK, I am going to finish up now, um, but before I go, um, you'll notice the picture behind me. Uh, it's a picture from Reggie's Meadow and it's of a barn owl flying in the two o'clock uh, Valley of the Eagles demonstration. And it was very kindly painted for me as a leaving present. Um, and so I have a little bit of the Hawk Conservancy with me every day and it's quite topical really uh, because a few weeks ago uh, we had a pair of owls move into our garden in a Hawk Conservancy designed nest box and uh, they've been with us for a few weeks now and we've got a little bit of uh, photography of them because we put a night vision camera up so that we could watch them. So in a way I feel as though I'm not in complete isolation because I'm, I'm sharing uh, our outdoor space with a pair of barn owls. So thank you very much for listening. Before I go, um, we'd just all like to thank you for your support. Uh, all of your messages of goodwill 
um, are really important to all of the team which are holding the fort and, and looking after the birds. Um, one thing I would ask you, if you can help, um, we'd really appreciate it that uh, if you're thinking of coming to see us later on in the year, um, would you think about perhaps purchasing your tickets online? It would really help us at this difficult time. Or perhaps if you're thinking of getting somebody a birthday present, have a look on our website. Um, one of our experiences might be a perfect present uh, for one of your friends or family and really help us. So take care everyone and I look forward to seeing you all at the Hawk Conservancy as soon as we can. Bye bye.